Greetings, investigators. Welcome to our comprehensive guide to the Edge of the Earth Investigator Expansion Box. No, you can't have a slideshow. This box contains new investigators and player cards. There will be a companion box which looks similar and has a new multi-part campaign. But this won't contain any cards for deck building. You don't need to purchase both boxes and are free to mix and match with your existing investigators and scenarios. Back in the Dark Ages, the adventures and player cards were all mixed together and split into monthly releases with weird plastic packaging. But no one really remembers the forgotten times. There is a QR code on the rear which we suspect probably isn't going to work as they haven't functioned in a while. How long do you think we should wait for this thing to do anything? Well, that's probably enough. This box has the same footprint as the previous deluxe expansions. Obviously it is noticeably thinner however. We have been comparing it to the premium expansion boxes for the Legend of the Five Rings card game. However, whereas these are sturdy cardboard boxes designed to be reused with the same strength as a core box, unfortunately the Investigator expansion comes in the same flimsy cardboard as a regular deluxe box. We are hoping the campaign expansion comes with a rigid box and an insert, but in today's money-saving climate, who knows? Our copy arrived shrink-wrapped, and unlike the previous boxes, there is only really one way in, and that is through the top here. As you can see, it is definitely the same flimsy cardboard with a non-functional insert, both of which are designed to be disposed of. In the top, you have a hefty pack of cards and a complimentary Ziploc bag. Removing the insert, underneath we can see a second complimentary Ziploc bag and the tiniest of rule sheets. Let's take a closer look. There is a quote from Lovecraft's Mountains of Madness and a reminder you can mix these new cards and investigators with any other product. The expansion symbol is the scariest snowflake we have ever seen and the additional rules let you know that multi-class cards have returned with a vengeance. This time the rules are much clearer. Next we have the researched keyword. Remember those upgradable seeker cards that began with Strange Solution back in the Dunwich Legacy? Well, despite you managing just fine for six whole cycles, they have decided they need an official keyword. Anyway, there is a small VPN, I mean FAQ, that reminds you neutral is not a class, despite having an investigator. There are some credits, so don't forget to say hello to Brian Schomburg, as we told you who he is. And on the back, Gasp Shock Horror is an advert for a game line that has officially concluded. Guess they have some copies in the warehouse they need to ship. Surely the best part of any cycle are the brand new investigators. Here we have five, the traditional one per class. They are Daniela Reyes, the mechanic, Norman Withers, the astronomer, Monterey Jack, the cheesemonger, sorry, sorry, archaeologist, Lily Chen, the martial artist, and Bob Jenkins, the salesman. All of these you may have seen before in other Arkham Files products, the newest being Daniela. Norman has appeared previously in the card game as a promo investigator in his own novella. In summary, Daniela is a guardian who reacts to being attacked by automatically dealing one damage or evading her attacker. Norman is a seeker who gets to have the top card of his deck revealed and play that card as if it were in his hand at a one resource discount. Monterey Jack is a white semi-hard cheese made using cow's milk originally created by 18th century Franciscan friars of Monterey, California. It was popularized as Jack's cheese by David Jacks, a Scotsman who migrated to America in 1841. Monterey Jack is a rogue who gains a bonus card or resource if he moved on his turn, or potentially both if he moves far enough. Lily is a mystic whose investigator ability is that she gets to start with her signature card or cards in play. Bob is a survivor who lets other investigators at his location play their item assets on his turn, potentially splitting the cost with them as well. Class-wise, we know Norman is a Seeker Mystic, and in the same tradition we gain a Guardian Survivor, a Rogue Seeker, a Mystic Guardian, and finally a Survivor Rogue. Goodbye Wendy then. There is a little twist however. If you remember, the first time we looked at Old Storm in Norman, we discovered that although he was a Seeker on the face of things, he was limited to level 0 Seeker cards, and any experience cards must be Mystic cards. 
This is narratively brilliant, really giving him a character arc as he changes from a man of science to a believer in the supernatural. This is also a great deck building challenge, particularly in multiplayer. As the campaign progresses, he becomes less effective as a natural seeker and may change roles within the group or simply supplement his clue gathering with mystic cards. The great news is that all the investigators share these exciting deck building options, gradually converting from one class to another. Moving on to the stats, we have the usual 12 points, also distributed Norman style with the legendary pop pop of a 5 and a 4. Hugely OP and only really counterbalanced by the 1 and 2 if you are playing true solo. Okay, Lily and Bob are a little better rounded with a 4, 2 3s and a 2. And with Lily only having a 3 in willpower, you will definitely be wanting to migrate her to Guardian cards ASAP. Looking at health and sanity, everyone gets 14 points with 2 6 8, 2 8 6s and Lily bringing balance to the force with an enlightened 7 7. Signature card wise, we had probably best start with Lily as she has the most to talk about, setting a new record for the number of cards, which of course are double sided. During your initial deck build, you get to choose one of these four discipline cards that starts in play. For every 15 additional experience points you earn, you get to add another one to your deck. So at 45 XP you can have all four. Great for standalone play, eh? Each one gives you a bonus to a different stat and a super OP finishing move. Like take three actions for the price of one. An ability so powerful it flips the card over to its cooldown side and makes you do a little mini quest in order to recharge it. Someone has been playing too much Street Fighter. Or maybe Overwatch. To further counteract these abilities, for every discipline in your deck, you must have a copy of her weakness, giving her potentially four signature weaknesses, a random basic weakness plus campaign weaknesses, and up to four additional weaknesses from using the standalone scenario XP rules. Moving back to normality, loosely speaking, Daniela has a weapon she can give to the enemies at her location to hit her with as many times as she likes for free, thus allowing her the privilege of hitting them back at the cost of one action or maybe triggering her reaction to evade and ping them for one damage. You better hope she has True Grit as one of her zero level guardian cards. Her weakness is a very lacklustre direct 1-1 one -one enemy. Nothing to see here folks. Norman's Livre de Ebon and Harbinger are finally revealed. His Hyperborean Grimoire allows him to commit the revealed top card of his deck to a skill test and gives him a repeatable free swap and his weakness basically shuts down any kind of searching and deck manipulation, which is like Kryptonite for Seekers. Good job he is practically a mystic then. And as it counts as being in his threat area, he can get a little help from his friends at his location to get rid of it. Who wants to guess what any self-respecting archaeologist signature item would be? That's right, a trusty bullwhip, which allows him to swap his lame 2 in combat for an ultra-violent 5 instead. Don't get that excited, as you have to exhaust it to do a measly plus 1 damage, or get a free evade. But you could just do a basic evade test at exactly the same difficulty instead. His weakness, Buried Secrets, pins him to the spot and has him investigate in order to free himself, so let's hope you get lucky with that shroud value. Bob, which we all know is short for Kate, gets the MVP item here, not only giving him a discount on all items he plays, but a permanent teamwork, allowing him to deal guns all round. You get a lightning gun, and you get a lightning gun! His weakness deals escalating horror depending on how few resources he has, so his rogue cards better be generating him some serious cash money. There are a whopping 228 player cards in this box, 16 of which are signature cards. You can blame Lily Chen for that. There is a single copy of four brand new weaknesses, leaving 208 cards for deck building. 11 are neutral cards, broken down into a single permanent, 3 that come in pairs, and 4 identical doggos. There are a total of 115 class cards at an average of 23 per class, most of which come in orderly pairs with these exceptions. Every class has a single copy of a permanent. The rogues have 3 exceptional cards, one of which is 2 levels of the same relic. The Seekers have a single copy of their researchable card and one copy each of the four potential upgrades. Experience wise, there are very few zero level cards with only two or three non-permanents per class. 
which is because there are 82 of these gold multi-class cards which divide neatly into 41 pairs. Well, as good as. Some of which are different levels of the same card. Where do you want to start? Let's start with the weaknesses. The theme of which is restricting certain types of actions. So if you take one of those actions, then you can't repeat it or any other of the named actions that turn. We love anything that makes you think and plan rather than just hits you over the head with arbitrary damage. Their burden varies according to your investigator's role. If your primary clue gatherer has their investigate action restricted, this is much more serious than having their fight or evade action shut down. And note how the primary actions of fight, move and investigate are all spread out over different weaknesses so you aren't immediately crippled. They get better, as rather than the cliché double arrow, you have to use healing to get rid of them. Not something found on your list of basic actions. But just as in nature, the antidote is found with the poison, and there are healing cards for everyone. Except rogues. Screw those guys. Although we try not to give our personal opinions round here, these are great game design. Moving on to the grey cards, permanent neutrals are nothing new, but now we have a way to start the campaign with experienced cards. Although two trauma will certainly bite. Let us know in the comments below what card or cards you think are worth such a price. It's going to be higher education, isn't it? Now we have a chaos token redraw that only takes up the body slot. Extra ally slots for creatures, of which there aren't that many other than the usual dogs and cats. An event that gives cumulative rewards dependent on the classes of card you have in play. And four copies of the same neutral card, which we haven't seen in a while. Sled dogs are creatures that take less slots than they should and help with your moving or fighting. Sadly, we don't have time or even willpower to go through all the cards, but here are some highlights that stood out. Each class gets a single permanent to be purchased at deck creation that gives quite a hefty bonus, but without the trauma penalty, thankfully. Guardians get a discount on first turn item setup. Seekers get a deck size increase and now draw two cards per upkeep and discard one. Remember, you can't choose to discard a weakness. Rose get a deck size reduction but can't have more than one copy of regular cards. Great for reliving those single core box days, eh? Mystics get an experience cost reduction for upgrading, but an increase for purchasing new cards. Perfect for those that can plan their deck's evolution before they begin. And survivors get their own personal nightmare mode by chugging away a third of their deck on turn one. This isn't optional either, so you may chuck away your scavengings. Coming around much sooner than we anticipated is a community designed card. These are usually done at the in-person Arkham Knights events in the US, but this one was created on a live stream as part of 2020 Gen Con. It is always fascinating to see what the finished product is after it has been cleaned up and refined during playtesting. We love the Exile mechanic and were pleased to see an upgraded fire extinguisher in this expansion. But any new players are probably confused right now as the Exile rule doesn't appear in the Learn to Play guide. It doesn't appear in the rules reference, or even the FAQ. It originally appeared in the Dunwich Legacy and certain subsequent products, but it looks like a major screw up as everyone forgot to put it on the rule sheet. Let's hope the revised core box has a revised rule book which finally removes this issue once and for all. Back to the Seeker's Unidentified card. This only has a single copy of the base card, and as you must have the untranslated card in your deck to upgrade from, this makes the process take twice as long. With only one copy, you won't be able to use shrewd analysis to get two for the price of one, sadly. Here is our second ever footwear card, and it gives a static bonus and a movement effect just like its predecessor. And hey look, if it isn't an experienced Henry One, a gambling card that is easy to understand and fun to play? Whatever next. Another rogue card with choices! We love these variable effect cards that were a highlight of the Circle Undone cycle. They definitely give you much greater agency, and as a rogue you should have no trouble affording them. Speaking of rogues, it looks like they may have one of the wordiest cards ever at 8 lines of game mechanics. As long as cards like this are the exception, not the rule, we are totally fine with it. Particularly as this new rogue equivalent to teamwork is so good. 
composers have returned with a higher level version of these skill booster style cards. If you thought they were pretty powerful before, they now give a static bonus to two stats, cost zero resources, and are much hardier. As well as having double the icon so you can commit your second copy to a skill test. Yes, the Mystic Ones are just as focused on spell tests. They do still start in your deck, so there is no guarantee they will be available early game when you need them. And at 3 XP you can't have them in your starting deck. Or can you? As well as the Composures, you will see other familiar cards from previous cycles in different experience levels. Each faction has a card that improves with every different class you control, and they all have a unique ability. The Rogue event gains more resources, and the Mystic Asset has more charges, for example. And don't forget a multi-class card counts as all of its classes at all times. So if you are considering a gold asset with two, or even three icons, then these get significantly better. Something that would have been a set if it weren't for those meddling kids, what we mean rogues, are these variable skill cards. They gain icons for two skills equal to your investigator's values. And note, it doesn't say printed or base skill either. So that's another reason to grab some composures, even if the guardian card is the only one to line up perfectly. And take note, they only gain the icons while in your hand or after you have committed them to a test. So, if you like to commit cards from your deck, or your discard pile, or under your investigator card, or wherever, then they will be blank, and you cannot commit them as they have no matching icons. Will we see a rogue one in future? Let's hope so, as they need all the willpower help they can get. Instead, they get this one here. Mmm, similar, but not quite. This card is pretty reliable in Jenny, especially Dark Horse Jenny, or certain investigators when making willpower tests. Or for anyone crazy enough to take Wendy into combat. But is it really going to do better than an unexpected courage on average? As far as investigators go, there are definitely cards here that support their core gameplay. Daniela has some hit me cards, so she can trigger her reaction ability or use her wrench. Ironically though, not the card actually titled hit me however. Lily has some non-firearms cards for combat. Cheese Face has plenty of movement options. Bob definitely has either items or other cards that affect items. We are quite enamoured by Black Market, it is true to say. And Norman? Well, Norman has a 5 in intellect and a 4 in willpower. So cards are pretty much irrelevant to him. Put some spells in, and give him the new Grounded. A uh, Mystic Card Draw is now a thing, apparently. Moving on to the Elephant in the Buffet. Gold Cards! If you experience these first time round and still have recurring nightmares about those sprawling FAQ entries, then fear not, as everything has now been simplified. Chances are, if your main class matches up with one of the icons on a multi-class card, you can shove it in your deck and forget about it. This is even true for the level 0 gold cards and the 5 investigators in this box. If your primary class doesn't match, but you have access to a second class and the card is within your level, you are also good to go. It is only if you have a limited access to certain classes, like these Dunwich Investigators, that you will need to keep careful count of how many of those are out of class cards. But gold cards are great! We have events as well as assets now, and there are plenty of items to keep Bob happy. Plenty of spells to keep Norman happy, plenty of non-firearms hitty sticks for Lily, and everyone loves discounts. And allies! Lots of lovely damage and horror absorbing meat shields. And there is a hammer that will take your entire turn to hit someone with. Thor will probably want that back. Lots of these are upgradable too, as well as all these level 0 and level 1 cards to help fill out the new investigators and their class switching upgrade paths. Moving on to the campaign scenarios. Oh right, there aren't any. No new tokens either. Or free tarot cards. Oh jeez Rick, this is really weird. Having covered this game for five long years now, we have definitely adopted a routine and this certainly shakes things up. It can leave you feeling a little discombobulated. And with the announcement that the back catalogue will be reformatted beginning in 2022, this feeling is here to stay. Not having to wait for an upgrade to a class card is weird. No more going online and speculating what the translated version of your research card will be. Calling them research cards at all, in fact. 
We blame the millennials. Delayed gratification is good for you. The living card game for the Netflix age is here to stay and you can binge all of your content in one sitting as opposed to the delightful anticipation of evenly spaced episodes. What will this do for the campaign release? Speaking of campaigns, this box has the edge of the earth name and branding despite now being permanently divorced from it. Do we see some thematic ties? Something to get you excited? The most arctic themed cards are found in the neutral, so we can't wait to see pictures of you zooming down the streets of Paris on your dog sled. You can also find more in the gold cards, although ice picks are just as likely to be found in the hands of mobsters as they are explorers. Guess we had better end the video here. With this change in format, we don't get to do our cool statistics comparison to the previous deluxe boxes. And don't forget your sleeves, everyone. With the amount of investigators now released, you might be running low on mini American board game size. The US release date has been subject to global shipping delays, but the UK has plenty of copies. If you want to send us to the Antarctic, or at least somewhere with snow, to unbox the campaign expansion, head over to our Patreon and pop something in the tip jar. Or maybe we should run a Kickstarter. No, you can't have a slideshow. We worked it out, and to cover all the cards in this box, it would have been more than 12 minutes.